हेलो गाइस सारे पांडे हेयर फ्रॉम इंडियन विफिक स्कूल एंड यू आर वाचिंग बेसिक टू एडवांस फ्लिप सीरीज इनसाइड ऑफ फूड इफ यू लाइक द कंटेंट मेक श्योर यू सब्सक्राइब एंड जॉइन आवर फेसबुक पेज यू कैन आल्सो हेड टू आवर वेबसाइट एंड चेक आउट आवर कोर्सेज ऑन हुडनी फिनिक्स एफ डी टाइफ्लो एक्सेट्रा एंड बुक यूर सेल्फ फॉर सेवन डेज फ्री डेमो क्लास एंड वॉच बाय यूर सेल्फ हाउ सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स हैव मेड टू द टॉप स्टूडियोज इन जस्ट टू मंथ्स ऑफ आर कोर्स हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू दी पार्ट फोर एंड नाउ द कैशिंग ऑफ आर पार्टिकल्स हैज बीन डन सो नाउ वी कैन जस्ट गो हेड एंड मेश एंड अगेन कैश आर समेशन एंड देन वी कैन रेंडर इट ऑल राइट okay so first of all i will uh, just add a particle fluid surface so this node is responsible for creating the mesh okay and we can even visualize particles so i'll click on this and i'll change the output to uh, particles okay and i uh, connect this and if you just see so you, now you can see <clears throat> we are having our particles back okay i can change the visualize to velocity okay and i can just change the color over here and maybe decrease the range something like this okay so you can see we are having our particles back and the good thing is now it's not being stored in a ram but it's being stored in a um, <clears throat> disk okay so now let us also bring our collision geometry okay so i'll go back to my source okay and uh, i'll copy the path of my collision of my crack you can do it from here or you can do it from here it's same thing and go back to the cache okay and now i will use an object merge so object merge is used to bring objects from different levels okay so i'll paste the path and you can see it will bring a crack geometry okay and now i will just type a merge and merge both of them so now i can see both of them how they are looking okay all right so now we can just choose an interesting frame which we want to uh, mesh okay so i think this one looks fine okay all right so now uh, let me go to my particle fluid surface okay and before that what i'm going to do is um, i will delete some of the particles okay so let's say uh, here i will just you know click on my selection tool okay and i will select these points okay or maybe just these okay and i'll press delete over here okay and it will add a blast node and delete all those particles and i'll just click on this delete non selected okay so now this way we can only work with this much of particles see all your options and in the final we will just remove the blast node and i will we will just use it <coughs> to mesh everything okay so now if i connect this one okay nothing will change but if i change it to so this particle fluid surface is basically having all the particles then we blast it out okay and now we are just using it again or we can also use an unpack node over here but this will just work fine okay and now i can change it to surface polygons okay and you can see we are having a mesh like this okay so if you see originally our particle it was uh, set to 0.025 and the best part over here is like if i set it to point, uh, 0.025 okay <clears throat> sorry not 0.25 0.025 so this will give us a good mesh okay and i'll change the visualize to none but the best part is i can even go lower and that is like really good because even if our fluid was simulated at lesser resolution uh, we can go even higher resolution of our meshing part okay it's not really recommended but you can really do it okay because mesh resolution is little bit independent from our particle resolution okay so that that is a good thing you can work with it so i'll, I'll just put it to 0 0.02 and you can just play with it okay now let us see all the options so voxel scale is like the uh, how <clears throat> accurate the position of the particles will be and obviously it will contribute to your resolution but it tends to get really slow so just leave it to default okay maybe if you are doing some small scale simulation where the detail is really required you can go lower then we have okay so we will leave influence scale as of now let's go to our droplet scale first so if i put it 2.5 you can see it will just basically make our mesh really thin okay and the reason is it's changing the attribute uh like the p scale attribute of our all our points and this is just like a multiplier so if i put it to 2 it will just make everything you know bulge out okay so i don't really change it maybe 0.9 or point, uh, 0.95 will do if you want to make your uh, mesh little bit thin that will that is just fine okay now the most important part is this influence scale and this is like really important right so the higher so you can see we are having these lone particles okay so let's say if i increase the influence scale you will see those particles they will get they will start getting connected okay so if i put it to 3 you will see they are not connected but if i put it to 4 
they will get connected okay so this is like how much the influence of an influencer is <laughs> i mean of an particle fluid surfaces so if i increase it even more you will see even this particle will also get connected okay and this will just start forming everything as a like one single mesh this say uh, this might be useful in small scale fluid simulation but in large scale because the force uh, is so strong that it will just break everything into individual particles so the default value is 3 okay if you want to go uh, anytime if you want to go to the default value you can just right click and uh, revert to default uh, I like to like if my uh, simulation is having good resolution, I can go to 1.5. But now you can see it has just broke everything. I can go to like two or something, yeah, and that will just work fine. So right now it might not be looking good, but after shading and everything, this will look a lot better. And if you have even a higher resolution, you can even go to go to like 1.5 or something. Okay, so that is it. Now one of the most important part is uh, if you go into this uh, filtering that is like smoothing our mesh out and i'll show you what i mean so i'll go back to my particle fluid surface and for this thing i will uh, i won't be using any i won't be using any delete node or anything uh, i'll just you know make a complete mesh and i'll show you what i mean okay so you can see the meshing is done for our uh, full tank and it's looking like really good but one issue that you can see is uh, uh, there are some you know uh, like the mesh over here is not really smooth when it's moving it's fine but on the flat areas you can see it's not really smooth it's having this and this will really bump up when we render it so there's like this issue with uh, flip fluid uh, flip solver in hudni that whenever the mesh is like really smooth whenever it's flat it tends to get some artifacts and we need to smooth them out okay so the problem is if i use this smooth Okay, if I click on this smooth, it's going to just smooth out like almost everything. Okay, it will even smooth out these small final details and you can see they will just get lost. So obviously we won't be using a value of two. We need to go higher. So let's say if I go to six, okay, you will see all these small details. They will just vanish. Okay. Yeah, and that is an issue. So even though it fixed this parts, but it just, it came with a cost of, you know, losing details. So we are going to use a mask so let me show you how we can make a mask okay so click on this visualize mask and this will basically visualize your mask and click on this velocity range okay so i've seen a lot of people they have really uh, they really have a lot of trouble whenever they get these two windows of anything it's like really you know uh, and i will blame hudni for this because every time we see these kind of uh, windows and all those ramp I mean, almost every time it's always different. Sometimes it's doing different. Sometimes it's taking a lower range. Sometimes it's taking the higher range. Okay. Okay. So every time we see these windows, like um, all of the times they are doing different things. So you really need to read what it's saying. So it says generate a filter mask from the fluid velocity where surface areas with the velocity below the minimum speed gets full filtering. So it says wherever the speed is below these value, uh, the smooth will be applied and wherever the speed is above this value the smooth won't be applied so because there are two values and it makes everything really confusing you can just bring both of the values to an equal amount so 0.5 and now you can treat both of them as one so once again there's a uh, issue don't ever put two values to same number you can put it to 0.55 so now you can treat both of them as a single value okay and now let's say if i increase or decrease my velocity range you will see basically uh, if I like if I change it to you know something like two okay 1.8 so you can see now only our high uh, highly speed particles they are only having these uh, you know colored mesh okay so everything below is having red color and everything with high speed it's having blue color okay so yeah so now what what it means is so wherever the particles are low they are having lower speed it's colored with you know uh, red color and wherever they are having higher speed it's colored with you know uh, this blue color and then this these two values they create a fall off okay so what i can do is i can um, uh, all right so now let me just show you so if i uh, click on this smooth now okay if i click on this smooth so you will see it's going to smooth almost everything out over here okay so that was the issue what we were getting but next to smooth we have this mask and as soon as we click on this you will see we are going to have our details back on this portion 
yeah and you can see we got our details back and on this area the smooth is working really good okay and that is like really important so this way we can have uh, you know our mask applied only on the areas where there is higher speed and where there is low speed oh sorry uh, yeah i mean where where there is low speed we can apply lots of smooth and on the high areas it will create a mask and just exclude that part okay so now i can just click back on this visualize mask and if you click on this uh, flat wire shaded you can see we have some issues like where uh, the mesh is flat it will you know just create lesser polygons so to fix that thing you can just click on this adaptivity and change it to zero so uh, i mean it's a good feature but let's say you can see we will have some artifact especially when a droplet of liquid falls back so let's say if it falls over here it's going to create uh, lots of polygons again and that might cause some uh, flickering in the mesh yeah so now you can see we are having uh, you know details everywhere and this will just work fine okay all right so now the next part is how we can have a flat mesh so you can see on the sides we are having some issues okay and that is due to we were using boundary layer okay so in order to fix that uh, first of all i'll just go to my particle separation and change it to 0 0.06 okay so we just work with a lower resolution mesh to change things um, interactively okay so that is fine now what i want to do is basically i want to go into this regions and click on this bounding box so what that's going to do is it will just look at our look at my ocean surface okay and whatever size we were using it's going to just copy everything so let me show you what i mean so if i go back to my source okay and to my ocean source you can see we are basically using this bounding box so it will say uh, you can just you know uh, wherever you find volume just mesh everything okay and just cut out have a cut out using this box size okay so i can click uh, click on this uh, ocean source right click and click on this parameters now i can go back to my uh, cache okay and in my particle fluid surface uh, i will just i'll just you know turn it off for once i will click on this use bounding box and i'll connect the size paste relative reference and i'll click on the center paste relative reference okay and if i just turn it back on now you will see we will just have a thin sheet of uh, mesh okay and this is like really important to check if everything is working and yeah it's working fine and now i can just click on this closed boundaries so it's just going to close this box okay it will just extrude it and this ocean surface uh, source uh, the box and the size center will just you know cut it out okay and that is working now really good okay so there's one more issue you can see on the edges we are having some you know we are having some uh, artifacts like this and they will be more prominent when we increase the resolution okay and that is basically due to if i go into my flip uh, simulation and if i go into my uh, volume motion so you remember we were using this lower padding and upper padding for our uh, boundary layer so what we can do is we can just cut out that part okay and in order to do that so the value was set to 0.3 so i can just change and you know so this is z axis i will go into uh, what i'll do is i'll just go into my this size option so this is x this is y this is z and i can just write 0.3 or i can have little bit more room i can write 0.5 so it's forming this box but then if we subtract a value it's going to you know just cut it out so you will see yeah so it just cut it out um, 0.3 units of our uh, mesh and we can do same on the x axis also so minus 0.3 i'll just put it to 0.5 okay so it's just going to cut out this part yeah that is working all right so that is it now we are having our mesh and now let me just go ahead and you know cache it out just like we did in this part okay so again i'll just change it to 0 0.025 for a final resolution all right so we are having our final mesh back okay final resolution mesh and it's looking good okay and let me just go ahead and i will just uh, copy this file cache node okay and uh, let me just press on escape okay okay so i'll just use this file cache node okay or you can just you know just bring another file cache node okay so i can show you what were the settings that i used previously so i'll just go over here and some things i'll make sure uh, i won't use this constructed part i will just change it to old method 
explicit okay and now i can just go to my location and uh, i can just use this cache and i've made a mesh folder i'll just go over there and i'll just write dollar f and i'm just going to write it out and that is it for our meshing part and in the next part we are going to see how we can render it out and okay so let's meet in the next part bye bye